Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, E-Steam Goddess of. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a demonic dominatrix in this action-packed all-new E-Steam series adventure. Get E-Steam Goddess of in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today. Yesterday, legendary filmmaker John Singleton passed away at 51 years old due to complications from a stroke which led to his family taking him off life support. And John Singleton's legacy will go on for generations because John Singleton made numerous contributions to black cinema that revolutionized the image of African Americans in media. Now, your John Singleton was a part of what I call the golden age of black cinema. And this golden age of black cinema, which started in the late 1980s with films like Spike Lee's She's Gotta Have It and Robert Townsend's Hollywood Shuffle, changed the way we saw the black image on the silver screen. And it was these films that opened the door for changing the image of African Americans and the perception of African Americans in film. Now, most of these filmmakers, with the exception, of, I believe, of Robert Townsend, your Spike Lee, your Mario Van Peebles, and Reginald Hudlin, I believe, many of these individuals came from the East Coast. And they oftentimes, in their films, presented their stories of life on the East Coast and East Coast experiences of African Americans in cities like New York, Philadelphia, and many other East Coast cities. But your John Singleton, when he came on the scene in 1991, I believe, with his first film, Boys in the Hood, what he did was give us a picture of life on the West Coast and the struggles of African American men on the West Coast with his now classic film, Boys in the Hood. And this film is significant because it showed us the, tr the struggles black boys go through in the areas like South Central, and it showed the struggles black boys go through as they try to survive in a environment that is controlled primarily by gangs and gang culture. And in contrast, he also showed us the impact of fathers in the home in that area of South Central Los Angeles. Because if it wasn't for Furious Styles, the father being in the home, then his son would have been a tragedy like the, I believe, the Morris Chestnut character's life was lost in the hood. And it, this film is a very powerful film because in contrast to the films that were presented by uh, filmmakers like your Spike Lee and your um, Mario Van Peebles and your Reginald Hudlin and your Robert Townsend, it presented us with a very darker picture of black life and it showed us a very, very somber picture of black life, something we didn't usually get to see in black film. However, in your John Singleton's Boys in the Hood, we did get some balance because with the Furious Styles character, we saw how a father could come into a boy's life and transform it so his life would not become a tragedy. Now, your John Singleton went on after Boys in the Hood received critical acclaim to make other films like Your Poetic Justice, and he went on to make another classic film about black manhood and masculinity, One Baby Boy. Now, Baby Boy is another, as I see it, culturally significant film for black men because this film also depicts the street life in the West Coast, but this one makes a powerful commentary on single mothers and how the impact of single mother households have on young black boys because the character of Jody is a baby boy and he's a baby boy because he grows up in this single mother household and he's stuck in this state of arrested development and because he's stuck in this state of arrested development he never really grows up to become a man because he was never taught those male life skills so I see baby boy in some ways like a bookend to um your Boys in the Hood, because Your Boys in the Hood was the film that showed us that 
a boy can transform his life with a thought when his father gets involved. And Baby Boy shows us what happens to a boy who never learns how to become a man. Now, your John Singleton is also known for making other classic films like Your Higher Learning, which was a film about black people in college and them getting caught up in the, the politics of college. And he made a commentary about how college, in some ways, ha it, people learn, but they don't really learn the way we think that they learn. So he makes a little bit of a commentary on how people can get caught up in things like hate groups and all these other all this rhetoric out here in that film and he also made the classic film um poetic justice which starred janet jackson this was a romance which was between her and the late tupac shakur now your john singleton it, as he made these films and other films like shaft and he made um many other films like rosewood rosewood was a historical film that I have a few issues with because I think that there's some historical inaccuracies in it, but it was a very good effort. I mean, he made a strong effort to bring the town of Rosewood to life in that film, and, and he did make a good effort to do that, and that's something I applaud him for, but I have my issues with that film, and that, that's something that I just have issues with, with that film. Um, and he also made other films um, like the remake of Shaft in 2000, and he, when and in making all of these films, he provided a lot of opportunities for African American actors, and he gave a lot of African American actors opportunities to act in films that they wouldn't get an opportunity to act in with mainstream media. Because when it comes down to mainstream media, mainstream media doesn't really want to give black filmmakers, black filmmakers or black actors opportunities, and John Singleton gave a lot of black actors opportunities to take their craft to the next level, like your Ice Cube, your Cuba Gooding Jr., your Tupac Shakur, your Tyrese, Snoop Dogg, and many others who wouldn't have gotten those opportunities or an opportunity to elevate their skills or take their skills to the next level. That's what John Singleton provided for a lot of brothers and sisters out here in the film world. And when he did that, he, he provided us with great quality films and great storytelling, which provided us with a diverse ex uh, experience of the African-American experience and gave us a bigger picture of the African-American experience on film. So John Singleton had made a tremendous contribution to black cinema overall, and he made a significant contribution to the black image in film overall. And that's something that will be a legacy to go on for many years, and it's something that he made a contribution to society that I believe was significant in changing the black image. Because before people like your John Singleton came out here with films, oftentimes the only image we got of black people were stereotypes. But with your John Singleton, we got to see the humanization of black people. So we didn't just see black people as thugs and gangsters. We saw rich, multidimensional people who were trying to show you their experience and their stories in his film. And we saw how their, their decisions were had a significant impact on the world. And we started to understand their motivations for participating in their actions. So your John Singleton is going to be missed and his f fingerprint on film is going to be missed because your John Singleton was an individual who made significant change in the black image, whether you um, like his films or not, they did have a significant impact on the black image, and they had a significant impact on the perception of black people all across the world, because anyone who has seen a John Singleton film gets a different perspective of the black image and the black experience from his stories, and his stories, will they really give you 
a really rich and multi-dimensional look at black people, one that you wouldn't get from someone like a Spike Lee or a Mario Van Peebles. And when you watch them and contrast them, you get a completely different picture and a completely different experience than your Spike Lee or your Mario Van Peebles or your Reginald Hudlin. You get a really, as I see it, a more grittier um, look at black life and experience from his films. And I believe that's the legacy he's going to leave, is giving you that counterpoint to his contemporaries like Spike Lee, Mario Van Peebles, um, Reginald Hudlin, Robert Townsend. He's going to give you that contrast. And I believe that contrast and that is a counterpoint that's going to be significant to his legacy and significant to black cinema overall. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon or my PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct books, which feature positive stories about the African American experience and, and present a unique picture of the African American experience, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, Isis, All That Glitters. The Goddess Next Door takes on a bikini-clad bank robber in this action-packed all-new Isis series adventure. Get Isis, All That Glitters, in paperback and Kindle Unlimited today.